How you doing guys and welcome to another video and in this video we're going to discuss the July 2020 SD card hack on the EOS M. Okay so for those that don't know the Canon EOS M is a mirrorless camera released by Canon in around 2012 and it was a really badly received camera and it was mainly because of the autofocus and, and a few other features which it had on or say which it lacked so it was it was badly reviewed and you know people didn't really like it then a few years later a couple of guys called Dan and Alex and a few other devs have modified the Magic Lantern software and turn this camera into a cinematic beast. Now, Magic Lantern, I'm not sure where it originated, but these guys have got this new firmware called Nightly Builds, and they're updating it so much. Now, you just put this software onto your SD card, you install it on your camera, but what that does is it opens up your camera to a whole new realm. That if you was to buy a camera that could do similar things, you'll probably be looking at around about a thousand pounds, maybe even more. Install it on your camera. So all it does is install a little boot flag on your camera, but the main crux of the software runs from the SD card. So you're not really modifying your camera in any way. So considering we're talking about a camera that you can buy off eBay for 80 pounds, it's absolutely amazing. What kind of functions does this give you? It gives you things like raw video. Now raw video is uncompressed. Now for instance, if you bought like a, one of the, new, the newer Canons, an M50 or M6 Mark II, regardless of how good the 4K is, you're still recording in an 8-bit format. Now if you go from 8-bit to 10-bit or to 12-bit or 14-bit, you're talking millions of colors, millions of shades, and those equate into perfectly gorgeous footage. Now the EOS M, as we spoke about before, records in 14-bit lossless. That's a dream for most cameras that cost a thousand pounds or so, or even more. And the fact that you can do that on such a cheap camera is absolutely amazing. So hats off to the guys who made this possible. But what I wanna talk about now is the SD card hack, because this is one of the biggest advancements in my personal opinion. The SD card hack takes the EOS M from 50 MB write speed to up to 76, to 80 MB write speed. Now, that is absolutely amazing because as far as I was aware, the Canon EOS M was bottlenecked. Your bottleneck would hit about 50 megabytes and then that was it. So any more information coming in is gonna cause your footage to be corrupted or it's just gonna stop your camera recording. Um, and that was a shame because we know the, the higher the bit rate, the more information it can process, the better footage it can, it can store. And you know, uh, like I said, I didn't know it could go higher than that. So when they released this new firmware, and now people are telling me, Colin, did you know that you can record up to 80? I was like, what? I said, you gotta be joking. So I tried it out, and yeah, I can record, mine goes up to about 76, which is absolutely crazy. Now, this opens up a whole new world because it's possible now that I can record in 1080p with a monitor, 14-bit lossless with no corruption, like, at all. I don't mind the odd one or two pink frames here and there because I can cut them, but with no corruption at all would be absolutely crazy. I might be wrong, I don't know until I try. But also, we can then potentially record in higher frame rates or res resolution, I, I should say, yeah, and frame rates too, without getting those corruptions or, or those the footage stopping. And you know that I've had problems recording those high frame rates in the past. Now, the reason why I did upload that video on the M50 versus the EOS M in 4K, even though it was a failure, I uploaded it to show people that it's okay if you wanna record a little bit of footage here and there on your little trip or whatever, it's no problem. But if you wanna do something focused and maybe you're earning money from this or it's from a music video, you need reliability. You have to have reliability. And that was the reason why I uploaded that video to show you that it's not always roses. There are so many things that can go wrong and that's the reason why it's been trashed by a lot of people as well. But as long as you get to know your camera, and know what you're doing, you'll have no problems. Okay guys, so let's boot into the ESM now. And I'm just quickly gonna go over uh, this home screen here or this main screen, just for people that don't really know what the ESM is about and what they're looking at here. So the first thing you can see on the top left is our audio meter. And that is telling us, you know, what audio is coming in, which is absolutely amazing. Cause you don't even get this on things like the Canon M50, which is sorely missed because 
your audio could be not even recording right or it could be too low, but you don't know that. So having it on your main screen is absolutely, a, it's a godsend. Secondly, we have the degrees. So we can see mine's running at 27 uh, Celsius right now, which is pretty cool. Now, if you're working in a lot uh, hotter climates or, you know, or in a, in a stuffy room, then the temperature could rise and your camera could potentially shut off and not record, um, you know, the footage that you want. Now, this happens with any camera, any cinema camera, I should say. Um, so if you look at things like the Blackmagic, they've got exhaust vents all over the place. The Reds have got some massive fans. And even if you look at the Sony A7 range, they only typically record 4K for about 20 or 30 minutes before they actually shut off because of heat. So this is not limited to say like the EOS M or the Magic Lantern is a problem, but it's amazing that we can see the temperature right on the screen. You can see my FPS there, which is at 23.9. Um, and I keep it uh, the shutter speed locked so it stays consistent. And then we've got my SD card space. Down in the middle of the screen, you can see we've got this little box that says over. Now that's showing us our exposure and because it's facing my light, the is obviously showing over, but we could dim that so we, we can get the perfect exposure. At the bottom, our first icon you can see is 14 bit. Now that shows me I'm recording in 14 bit lossless. 14 bit lossless on an 80 pound camera, are you crazy? Yes, you can go along and see on HD, it says 1080p, but you've got to realize the difference between the HD 1080p on 14-bit on lossless and normal HD on an 8-bit cam, which you probably have. The difference is night and day. There's so much more information in that raw image. It's crazy. You take a raw photo, you know how much you can push it around versus, say, a JPEG. That's the difference between uh, 1080p or 4K on, a, on a, an expensive camera or using HD raw on here it will blow most things out of the water. Um, as you can see, my um, uh, shutter speed is at 148, ISO is at 100, and the white balance is at 5100K. And because we're using a, um, a Helios 44M, it's in manual focus, and then you can see my battery power there. All right, so let's jump into the Magic Lantern menu. So I'm just gonna press the trash button down and hold it, and then we're in our Magic Lantern menu. And just quickly, before we go into the SD overclocking hack, I just wanna quickly again go through a few things here on my settings. So white balance, 5100K, typically where I leave it, ISO 100, shutter, you can see it's perfectly nailed at 148 and at 180 degrees, absolutely perfect. Picture style doesn't really matter which picture style you use, because you're recording raw, you're gonna get what the camera sees anyway, so nothing is gonna get baked in, um, which is really good. Then we've got our overlays, global draw, zebras, focus peaking, etc. Okay, so then we go into the video. So this is probably gonna be your most used um, uh, tab here, which is the presets. Again, you can see mine is in MV1080, which is my favorite one. But if I press um, the o uh, OK button, you can see we've got so much more here from MV1080p or MV1080p in a higher frame rate, all the way down to the bottom, we've got 5K anamorphic. Bonkers, mate. Um, and then if we custom modes is a new thing as well where you can set your own presets So it's easy to switch between any of those resolutions you want 1736 by 976 is what I usually use bit depth off because I like it in the highest which is 14 bit lossless um, and then FPS override FPS override is, is an important one because if you're using a monitor you need to switch this on okay you need to make sure that's on. That will really reduce the amount of pink frames. You might not even get any if you're recording in, in a higher bit rate. So turn that on. But also, if, you're, if you take the monitor off, you also wanna go back in and turn that off because then there's a chance that it will increase frames, okay? So with a monitor, use FPS override. Without a monitor, turn FPS override off. Shutter lock. Um, shutter lock, that's where how I uh, keep my um, shutter speed consistent. And then shutter fine tuning at minus 1.26 to keep it at a, a proper 180 degrees. Then if we go down now, I wanna go down into the SD overclock. So this is the new thing that's been added in, in uh, June. Now if I click okay and go in here, so if you've got one of the, the 95 megabyte cards, choose the first one. If you've got one that says 170, choose the second one. The third one is not available yet. I'm on 170 megabytes card, so that's the second one which I've chosen. Now, if we go all the way over to the debug, 
and go down and then we go to benchmarks okay so it's telling me there you can see my 192 megahertz there and if we go to benchmarks and press the play button card benchmarks and press ok and then we can do quick read or write benchmark one minute so if i press ok now i immediately then have to press the play button as soon as it starts got um, as soon as it starts the process so if i press ok now i'm going to press play and then it says you see that where it said no videos found so it's still going to try to do the benchmark now, but you're going to run into a problem and you're going to get the malloc error where it's not, it's, I, I believe the malloc error is where it's not reading or writing fast enough or whatever. But I just wanted to do this to show you how this will look in case you're wondering why it's not working. I had that problem. Somebody else had that problem. Funny enough though, it did come up with um, nothing to play back. I, I've never seen that before, but let's go through that anyway. So also, you can see now the write speed is at 58, which isn't much better than the, the standard write speed which we was getting before. And then now we've got the malloc error, okay? So this is what you don't want. It might even complete the, the, four, the process four times, but you're still gonna get the malloc error. Now let me show you how to do it properly. So let me just turn off the camera. I'm gonna turn it back on again now. Then what we're gonna do first is we're gonna record a video for just about 30 seconds or so. So you can see up in the top now, we've got the green recording icon. Now that's my favorite icon because when it's green, I know that I'm safe. There's gonna be no problems in there, in the, in the footage. Everything is gonna be, you know, nice. Orange is okay. But when you start going to yellow and red, you know you're in problems. But me, I just like to keep a solid green because it makes me feel good inside. <laughs> All right, so now we've recorded our footage. Let's go down to the debug option again. And then go down to the benchmarks. To press the play button. Press OK on card benchmarks. P press quick read or write, OK again. And then as soon as it starts the benchmark test, then we're gonna press play. And now we started the test, so hopefully we should get the proper read out now. So there you go. So now we're going up to 76 on the on the uh, right. And 84 on the read. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm so over the moon with this. You don't understand how much of a big deal this is to the to the EOS M. See, the write speed has gone up even more, actually. So now what the write speed is at 77. And the read speed, and um, still on 84. So absolutely amazing. I'm so over the moon with that. I just, you just, yeah, guys, man, the, the July 2020 build, absolutely amazing. So um, I just want to go back into the menu for a second now. And I'm going to tell you one more time on how to install this and make sure you're getting the, the read speeds properly so you can you know how to test it. Obviously install the, the latest build. Go to the Magic Lantern menu. Go to the Movie tab. Go down to the SD Overclock. Press the Play button. And make sure you choose the correct card. If you don't choose the correct card, it's not going to work, okay? So choose the correct um, option for your card. Go over to the debug and then down to benchmarks. Once you've installed the SD overclocking hack, you can then restart the camera and then go to do your um, benchmark test afterwards if you have any problems. But I just went straight through, should be okay. Once you go into the benchmarks, press play, card benchmarks, okay quick read or write okay and then and then as soon as it starts then press the play button but obviously you must have recorded a piece of footage in the uh, in the camera already so guys yeah 
This is exciting times for us now on the EOS M, really boosted up the EOS M's capabilities now, and it's gonna do a wonders for a lot of us. So guys, last thing I wanna say is, if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet on the EOS M Magic Lantern, you need to join that group. All of this information which I found, the problems which I had, all of it was talk to me and explain to me how to get through it. We go through problems, scenarios, lenses, builds, mics, everything that we could think of to do with Magic Lantern and using our cameras, we go through it. Uh, apparently let's talk about the group being opened up to 5D users as well. Maybe that's gonna happen in the future, it looks like. Um, but I just wanna say a massive thank you to the guys over at the EOSM. Uh, forum which is Mark and Neil mainly absolutely amazing guys Kevin Kevin we don't see you that much anymore man what's happened to you man come on um, Mark Marcus as well Marcus is uh, is an amazing guy his knowledge on the MLV app is so amazing and he's got a couple of videos as well on, on MLV which he's put out on the on the app as well so um, I'll link those in the, in the info anyway so you can check those out um, but guys yeah come and join the group you know it's it's an amazing resource of information um, and it was not and the Magic Lantern forum is absolutely amazing, but sometimes that stuff can blow your head if you're not quite technical. But over at the Facebook group, it's quite easy to digest and people will kind of, you know, spend a bit more time. We've got to let them experts, you know, build up the, the, the EOSM and, and other versions of Magic Lantern. And we can't be bugging them with, you know, little questions which we have. So that's why the Facebook group was created, just for people to have a general chat and get general help and have chats backwards and forwards. Absolutely amazing resource and, and the, probably the best group you're gonna join on Facebook, period. There is no slander no arguments no one shouting at each other it's it's crazy it feels like you're in some alternate world like it feels like jesus just come and took you to heaven or saying but it's so crazy like but no everyone just always helps you know and even if you do put out a dodgy video people will say to you oh your pinks are a bit uh, mashed or this this could have been a bit better or that could have been a bit better but overall they, but they pick out the good and the bad so very good constructive criticism there um but just come over there guys let's get this group up to you know 500 it's almost like 500 but let's get to that 500 mark then let's look forward to getting the next thousand and build up this this resource because it looks like the magic lantern on the esm is, is showing no signs of slowing down so let's get this built up and yeah guys thank you very much and i'll see you on the next one. Oh, talking about the next video let me just show you a quick snapshot this video is gonna be sick. Like I can't, this thing what I've built is absolutely amazing. And it will work on any camera again, which has got a, HDR, a HDMI out, whether it's EOS M, M50, Sony, whatever, you're good to go with this one. So stay tuned for that one. I would have finished it today, but the weather's dead but I'm gonna finish it in the next couple of days and then make sure I get it out there. But guys, thanks for watching the video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one later.